Very good, Justin. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. Hey, quick question: Do you ever uh, do you ever get go head to head with Trayvon Walker in practice, and how tough of a matchup is he if if you've had that occasion? I get to go get Trayvon really almost every day, and it's hard because his arm's so long and he just explosive off the ball. Justin, why'd you decide to come back? What was what? How tough a decision was that for you, and, and why'd you decide to come back? I mean, it was a tough decision. It was a tough decision. I feel like I had a lot of a lot of a lot that I need to come back and prove. Also, it gave me a chance to come back and graduate and get my degree. Let's go to Jake Rowe and Jake Jennings. Uh, Justin, we were just talking with Trayvon, and he made it seem like you know Jalen Carter, a guy that's played you know defense tackle, maybe even some nose tackle for you guys is working out there with him at defensive end. Is, is that what you're seeing too? And it, what, what, you know, does he have the ability to kind of play out there on the edge? What is your opinion of him as a, as a defensive end? In my opinion, he, I feel like he has the ability to play everywhere on the D-line because he's just so athletic and strong, and he can just get off the ball really good. Justin, um, Broderick Jones, Amarius Mims, some of the other younger guys, what have you done to be a leader to them? And do you see an opportunity for them to be a big part of the offense come this fall? I've just been standing there here telling them, like giving them the confidence that they can feel me be a one and do whatever it takes to help the team. Because at the end of the day, it's about the best star fire that come out there. Let's go to Matthew Welsh and then Anthony Dasher. Hey, Justin. Um, Coming off of last year where the offense was really picking up in the last five games and with a lot of returners on the line in the backfield, what kind of momentum do you all have going into the spring and maybe into the season? I feel like the momentum the momentum has shifted in the right in the right place. Uh, I feel like it just come to that team bun and everybody just been on the right page and connecting to get us the to get us the goals that we need. Hey, Justin, you kind of answered this a little bit a second ago when, uh, you know, we were asking about why you decided to return. I want to kind of get your um, response to when you first found out that NSA was going to do do the waivers to give you a chance to come back. Where, had you already kind of prepared to move on, or was it like a like a whole slow, wait, wait a minute, I can, I can come back and prove myself kind of? What was your what was it like when you first heard that news? I mean, coming into the season, I knew it was like – I was playing like it was my last because you never know what's going to happen. So I was just trying to give it all I got and leave it on the field. Let's go to Mark Weiser and then Mike Griffith. Justin, you mentioned about having something to prove. What is it that you have to prove, and, and how far are you away from your degree? Uh, I have, like, five more classes, and one of the things I needed to improve was just, like, just being consistent every game and just being consistent all four quarters. Uh, hey, hey, Justin, can you talk about um, the, the challenge moving from one side of the line to the other and also that the neck injury? How, how tough was that to overcome? I mean, it really, it really, it really wasn't hard to overcome because I always put myself in a hard situation because I always look at myself as the underdog because coming out of high school, I was an underdog. Coming in in college, I was an underdog because I had people like Andrew and Isaiah, people like them in front of me, so I always knew I was an underdog, so I always – just play with that chip on my shoulder and just feel like I got a point to prove. Let's go to Palmer and then Seth. Yeah, earlier this offseason when we talked to Coach Luke, he was saying that, you know, one of his goals is to find the best five guys around. You know, how much do you think the versatility and, and ability to play, you know, all around the offensive line, you know, is, is helpful for finding that best five guys? It, it, it helps it helps us a lot, like, especially when it comes to, like, injuries and things like that, because you never know who's going to get dinged up and hurt. So you always just got to have that top ten that you know going to always be there and help you with the team if you ever, if they ever need it. Justin, the, the ball got out quicker last year for the offense, whether it was Stetson or, or, or JT. Do, do you have any reason for that, either reason you think that they released the ball quicker? I feel like it just started with us giving them the confidence and just ha them having the confidence in the pocket to just throw the ball and just feel that through. Let's go to Connor and then Lance. Hey, Justin, this is year two with Todd Munkin. Have you noticed any sort of changes with him personally? And how much more comfortable and confident are you guys in his scheme now that you're in year two of it? I feel like the, off the offense has got real comfortable with, like, the playbook and stuff like that. But and I feel like Coach Munkin have like really like settled down and like start really started to develop us like as an offense. 
Hey, Justin, there's been some talk, uh, or we asked Trayvon, you know, about him, uh, you know, talking with the, his, some of his defensive uh, counterparts uh, about getting this vaccine. Uh, we saw Kirby get it this past Saturday. Has there been any talk amongst the offensive line and uh, the offense in that room uh, about uh, getting out there and, and getting it done? Yeah, Coach Smart had mentioned to us, but we haven't, like, really, like, we haven't, like, really sat down and, like, signed up for the vaccine yet, but. Okay, Justin, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.